Okay, so far we've been worked on the bipedal, the simplest bipedal walking model and how we can model them, how we can simulate them and what are the energy involved with it and so on. Definitely you can make the model more realistic or more complicated. You can add a joints or you can add a mass for the legs and you can even um, make a foot, okay, a curved foot, like mimicking a human's foot, like a heel strike, uh, central pressure, uh, progression from heel strike to the toe. So I'm going to briefly uh, talk about what are the issues when you're doing the curved foot modeling. So I should warn you, it's going to be a lot more complicated than point foot massless leg model. So you have a foot. The very first step is you have to do some kinematic relationship definition. So definitely um, this is a rolling condition. So this point um, contact is uh, moving, but at this moment, contact uh, velocity is zero. So I'd rather set the coordinate at the ankle, which is just keep horizontally going forward. So your um, kinematic uh, variables should be all defined easily through the relative coordinate frame. So from your uh, ankle, it's going to be f formulated as a rotation and motion and the radius of the foot. And your knee center of mass uh, is going to be expressed by the um, uh, stance leg omega and the length with respect to the ankle point. And same for your center of mass at the pelvic point. Pelvic point is going to be expressed with respect to the ankle point. And your stance leg or the swing leg, sorry, um, is going to be expressed from your center of mass point of view, only um, simply expressed by the omega and the C. So you have to first formulate the kinematic relationship between those and then note that your curved foot usually set the coordinate at the ankle. Okay, so next step is you should uh, do the uh, equations of motion. And then to, for that, you have to draw the free body diagram. So for that, this is a st uh, stance leg, uh, assuming this is a free hinge, no torques applied. And since this is a rigid leg, there is no longer constraint that the force should be aligned with the leg. Right, so your uh, contact force have in general could be directed any directions, and then also since you set the coordinate at the ankle, you should also consider the uh, inertia force here. Okay, so for for generating um, uh, equations of motion for the center of mass, you should also consider the inertia force here, and the uh, contact force from the hip joint for each leg, each leg, and the gravity. Okay, for the swing leg. Also, in, instead of uh, gravity, this is missing here, sorry. In, instead of, in, in, in addition to the gravity, you should also um, do the, sorry, inertia force. It should be a small mass. Inertia force at the center of mass because the relative coordinate frame and also joint forces. So the, you just have to consider in a similar manner, but uh, you should um, include uh, forces which is not aligned to the legs, etc. The final step is you should solve the collision equation, right? For the rigid body collision equ equation, you should note that um, depending on you uh, where, where you set the reference coordinate frame, if, if it is located at the center of mass, your angular momentum is I omega. But if you're off the center of mass, you should consider also the um, I omega term and the center of mass of velocity with the uh, moment arm, okay? So those are things that you have to consider for the more complicated um, a model. And also I'd like to mention the rolling friction. Okay, so rolling without condition uh, slipping means um, your contact point velocity is perfectly zero and your angular motion for those arc is correlated with the translational motion. So this is the typical uh, constraints for the rolling conditions. Your ac translation is minus alpha or well, the minus sign is depending on where you how you set the uh, coordinate frame. And another issue is where your ground reaction force is directing to. As I said, it doesn't re have to be the aligning with the leg, but where it should be um, directing to the center of mass of the stance leg or, or center of mass or what. That's totally depending on how you uh, obtain the free uh, equations of motion. So if you're assuming no torques, that will actually give you the constraint, the direction of the uh, free body, uh, the ground reaction force, etc. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the friction as well. So if suppose that this is the simple uh, what inverted pendulum with the curved foot, okay? 
So it is. So I'm not considering a joint force here for simplicity. So the only contact is with the ground. So I have a inertia force, gravity, and the contact forces. So I have a x directional forces, the friction, y direction force of no normal force, and the torques with respect to the c. The moment equation is gonna be obtained like this. Okay. So we know that the, uh, for for large, very large uh, leg length and the small foot arc, uh, we can approximate the equations like this. So this is what I want to say. So your friction, rolling friction, which is a static friction, is a function of motion. Okay. So as a function of motion, your friction changes, and same for your normal force. So normal force is not going to be mg anymore, and it's going to be a function of um, motion, right? And note that your Rolling friction, which is a static friction, has a limitation. Um, for the boundary, uh, maximum boundary, which is maximum static friction. So your rolling without slipping condition walking model is hold. I mean, basically, you are going to solve the inverted pendulum motion, equations of motion that holds with the constraint that those friction is less than maximum static friction. Okay. So this is the thing that I'd like to mention when you're interested in um, modeling human walking with a rolling foot. Okay, so we have gone through the uh, inverted pendulum, the simplest bipedal walking model using the inverted pendulum. So we worked on uh, obtaining the equations of motion for stance phase and the collision phase and worked on the MATLAB simulation, probably for your homework. And uh, we interestingly worked on um, how this point, very simple point mass mechanical worker punch could be um, done for the walking and how those are compared for the human data. And finally, simple um, issues about carpet foot model. Okay, so with that, that's got a um, wrap up for the inverted pendulum chapter. So next time, I'm going to introduce the recently um, um, worked uh, recently proposed but very interesting spring-loaded inverted pendulum model for the walking. Thank you for listening.